Well, he's here. I'm done vamping. Please welcome best-selling author. He's author of It's a Funny Thing. And it's a bestseller. It's a bestseller. He is an Emmy Award-winning comedy writer. Please lo love. We love him. Please, please welcome Mr. Mike Rowe. You have to unmute yourself, sir. I'm I'm, I'm unmuted. Yes, sir. Socially, is. socially, I'm unmuted. <laughs> Technically, I'm unmuted. You. It's good. How's the book selling? Uh, well, the book's fine. It, I mean, I, 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 I'm, I, I feel a little uncomfortable about it. I've just been pushing it too much, so I don't really need to talk about it. You know, I just feel like I'm annoying people at this point. So it's always like, oh, well, how's, you know, why? It's a funny thing. And it's, you know, so. Uh, well, I, just, I, mean, I, I didn't want to say anything, honestly. Uh, I've been trying to get you on this show for, uh, for quite a few years. And, uh, you know, you were always, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm riding on the roasts. I got to go win another Emmy for Futurama. I got this sitcom deal. I'm writing a movie. I've got anime. You never, ever can do my show. I, you, you brought this up, not me. I, yeah, I, yeah. I wrote you like 10, like handwritten letters. Please come on the show. Never, never, never. Suddenly, mm -hmm. suddenly, you have a book that you're selling, and uh, I, I don't have a problem having it on the show. Well, so. I know, and I feel a little bad about it, and I feel bad about, like, I've been chasing down comedian friends by the book, and I just, I feel like, I, I just, now I just feel creepy about it, so I'm kind of backing off on well, that. So I'm just happy to be here. Uh, hold on, let me, let me adjust, I gotta adjust the light here a second on my thing. Uh, on my nice so friend. Um, it's a fu funny thing. What's what's happening? No, no, you're, you're wearing a T-shirt that says it's a funny thing. Oh yeah, that just that comes. It came from the oh, no, sure. so, so your book. Yeah, yeah, yeah book, 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 it's, it's a funny, funny thing. thing. How the professional comedy business made me fat and bald. Best-selling book. But I'm not here to, to push that. I'm here to just hang out with David Feldman and fuck around and have a good time. Good. I see somebody stole a TV for you to help you in your background over there. <laughs> uh, it's still a nice look. It's just every day. It's like you're just living in a tax sale. That's, what it, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. <laughs> so you see, I'm not here. I'm just here to have fun. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. That That is very few people are willing to admit that maybe they they've slighted me and you're you're one of the first guests who's actually come on the show and said i was exploiting our friendship i apologize please forgive me and and thank you for that i, I appreciate that i appreciate that yeah. well um by the way i have some other furniture hanging around over here if you want me to send it over and you can shove that in the corner behind you anyway <laughs> i can't get in there <laughs> You know, there's, I find in the landing, all this furniture comes from, this is what people throw out. I know. I feel like uh, I'm on a curb at Ninth Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good look. It, it, that's what, bleach was invented for this kind of furniture. Oh, well, it's nice. It, it looks like a small funeral for a dead animal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. But I'm, I'm here to have fun. That's the thing. Huh? It's just about having fun. It's about That's having fun. fun. That's right. You make fun of the people. Um, nice shirt. That's good. Those will come in style again soon. I would hang on to it. <laughs> um, Are you having a good summer? This is a nice shirt, by the way. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, this is when I was in Moomin Shots. Moomin Shots. <laughs> Anybody? Nobody. Nobody under 80 knows Moomin Shots. <laughs> Sounds like something I had in the Navy. <laughs> now that's from the book. That's from I remember uh, that from the book. That's one of the techniques you teach us in it's a, I'll mention it, it's a funny thing, how the professional comedy business made me fat and bald, a comedy memoir. I'm because you were so humble about the book, I figured I would 
help you out. You didn't know you were wearing a T-shirt with the title. I, it was just a coincidence. I just, yeah. you know, because I, I, uh, I have a lot of these and they're available online for twenty nine ninety five. <laughs> I'm not here to push the stuff. I'm not here to do that. You know, I'm here to hang out, make fun of your apartment. Right. And then put gum on a donkey for a half hour. <laughs> Right. In your book, you do say that when there's a word that is hard to pronounce, you say, uh, I had that in the Navy once. I had that in the Navy. I caught that in the Navy once. By the way, we talk about Rickles all the time. My favorite thing he does, <laughs> he, uh, he'll like point out a couple in the audience, like in the front row, and I'll go, uh, is that the wife? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I again, I know I'm a broken record, but uh, you know, I I've, I have trouble sleeping, and I I've rewatched every Rickles appearance on Carson on YouTube, and they just get better. They get better. I think I can't possibly. He, uh, the, the, the my favorite one is he'll say this to Angie Dickinson or any. You're so beautiful. You're so beautiful. I'm married, but my wife is very ill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the worst thing you could possibly say. Anyway, uh, so August in uh, Los Angeles, how are, how are things? Uh, last time you were here, your, your mother was moving in with you. Is that going well? Mom is here. Going nice. She's adjusting. Uh, so I'm back in therapy. Um, I um, you you're a better that. man. You're a better man. There is a special place in heaven for you, sons you, you, who are doing what you're doing. It, it you is, say better, better man or bitter man? <laughs> <laughs> you're or a, both. You're, you're a good man, really. I mean, it's the sad thing. Here's the thing: not that you're trying to get laid, but women find that very sexy. Well. I uh, I got tired. I got tired. I got tired of getting laid. That's why I got married. <laughs> anyway, but I'm sure. Wife. I'm sure yeah. your your wife, when you met her, uh, this is exactly what she dreamed of. Uh, right. Let me tell you about the wife. You're not supposed to use the smoke detector as a cooking timer. <laughs> <laughs> um, She's coming at me. <laughs> I kid, I kid the wives. Yeah. Can you do wife jokes anymore? Is that allowed? I don't even know. Uh, you know, before the politically, I think you can. I, I think anybody. <laughs> I mean, how could you not make? Show Imagine it. it's like a Lenny Bruce thing where a comedian's doing wife jokes and the cops come and arrest him, and you know, and he has to read transcripts about wife jokes he's doing. <laughs> I, I uh, think it's harder to be mean for a laugh, which make, I don't know, I was reading about the uh, Emmy nominations and the, everybody who got nominated wasn't mean in comedy. They, they were hmm. uplifting. You know what I say? They, I say, fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, uh, people want to feel good more than they want to laugh. This is what the new thing. Well, I mean, can you blame them for kind of where we are in the world? I mean, if you think about like the turmoil of the late 60s from when Nixon and Vietnam and all that in the riots. And so the TV was I Dream a Genie and Bewitched and all escapist sort of, you know, programming. So, you know, that might have something to do with it. But we do laugh at tragedy. It is funny. I know. That's why, that's why my act got so many laughs. <laughs> it's true, though. I, I'm one of the few guys in, uh, that did stand-up drama. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't very uh, popular. What uh, was the worst night of stand-up for you? What was the night 
where you were just staring into the abyss and you thought, not only am I going to end my comedy career, I'm just going to end everything. It's just, it's just so bad. Well, we don't have that kind of time. <laughs> then all the, Give me one example. Well, I do remember, and this doesn't exactly, it's not exactly what you're looking for, but in the early 80s, in New York City, in the middle of the day, Pfizer, the company in New York on 42nd Street, uh, uh, just before their Christmas break would have Santa Claus go from office to office in a shopping cart full of gifts. And a Santa would go from office to office and give. Now, this was before they started making Pfizer, because I can't imagine Santa Claus having anybody sit on his lap. When <laughs> yeah. That's right. It was invented. Um, so apparently Santa can't. <laughs> I don't know what Santa had to do. Well, he was busy. It was Christmas. So uh -huh. he, I think there were the, the elves were going to strike or some weird thing was happening. <laughs> so I was asked in the middle of the afternoon to go to Pfizer and take over, get the shopping cart full of gifts, but not even go as Santa, but be a stand up comedian and go from office to office and be funny with the people you're giving the gifts to. So I'm like, and then they go, we'll give you 600 bucks. Jump cut. I'm like, you know, yeah, that's still 600, 600 bucks when you're making $50 a gig. Right. That's it's a lot like, of money. Uh, that's so I'm just, I was for Rudy Giuliani. Yeah, that's his gig now. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm going from office to office. Merry Christmas. Here's a gift. I'm like, who the fuck are you? Hey, did you see the commercial with the, the, the certs where two things together? It was a commercial, but it's funny. They're like looking at me and like, what the hell? And like, you know, hey, how about, you know, the toothpaste today, right? When you buy it, it doesn't go. And I'm like sitting there in the office doing jokes. And I'm going, I'm just thinking 600 bucks. That's it. <laughs> Get through it. Anyway, that was like a low point. Yeah, it was, a, but it, you know what? At that age, it doesn't matter. It didn't matter. It's six hundred bucks. Yeah, I so. got paid to go into a corporation and act like the new head of the West Coast division. It was an accounting firm, and I had to wear a suit. This was like thirty years ago, and I went in and just berated everybody and terrified everybody for like 20 minutes. You couldn't do that now. <laughs> you couldn't. Uh, you could try. <laughs> they, the, the lawsuits that would be filed now. It was so much fun. You know, topless Thursdays, <laughs> but only the men. Oh. And what I remember about five minutes into it, uh, you know, I was talking about uh, we're going to no doors on the bathrooms and uh, uh, top, topless Thursdays. Some people started laughing and there were some people taking notes for 20 minutes. It got worse and worse. And I was screaming and threatening to fire everybody. And <laughs> if you don't, I, somebody needs to come up here and hold my balls. You know, and some people were laughing and some people took notes. They were too afraid. And uh, it's but scary. You, what's sort of good about that, though, at that point in our career, your career, and at that age, you can just kind of laugh at it, right? I mean, it's just like, it's just to, to have to live through that stupid kind of situation and be just awkward and. You know, it's like it's not comfortable at the time, but it just it's one of those things you look back at and just go, you know, it's just in a way it's harder now. Like when I'm out in the world, like pitching shows and going on meetings, it's like everything feels like it needs to be correct and said properly. And you have to know exactly what you're talking about. It's there's less room to like fuck up and for things to not go well. And you have to really rehearse to make things happen. Like whenever I have a meeting or, you know, or pitch a show, I mean, I, I sit in my office and I talk to the lamp as if it's like the person I'm meeting with and I say it out loud. 
and I do it 10 or 15 times and I imagine what they're saying back to me and I just like try to get it to where it's almost rote, like it's in my head and I know at one point I like turn up the music very loud while I'm talking to be completely distracted, Mm -hmm. to kind of stay on point. So in other words, it's like there's so much more pressure now compared to back then where you have, it's just, you have, I got to the point in stand-up too where I would like blow it on purpose just to see if I can get out of it. You know what I mean? Do you, there was there was room to fail, I guess. Right. Is what I'm saying. Right. And I feel like I don't have that in my life, in my career at least. There's no room to fail anymore. So that's kind of disappointing. Yeah. I think that's the the this the nature of corporate America these days. Uh, so you practice before a, a, a lamp and uh-huh. then- Go into the executive's office. Uh, do you guys want to wear a, a light shade just to? Make I said like- many is the time by accident I would start talking to the lamp, <laughs> and they're kind of like, "Should we call security or do we- <laughs> is there? Is he okay? Is he having like a stroke or some?" Well, um, it's always great to see you, and I. I understand you have a clip. You, you said to me that, you know, you said, I'm always coming on your show. I'm always promoting my book. It's a funny thing. Mm-hmm. It, it's a bestseller. The book. It's, it's not. I, I, no, I just I promised to myself, you know, like, again, I don't I don't. The book thing is it's just getting annoying and I'm already annoyed saying I'm annoyed with it because I'm talking about it already too much. Too much. It's just been bothering me. You, you, know? you did. You did use my show to over promote the book i i, I didn't want to say anything but so i do appreciate that we're going to do something else so you, you in fact i i from now on will come on for free how about that well i wouldn't go <laughs> come on less than free yeah afford free on this book. <laughs> i will i will i will i will the, the five thousand dollars you pay me every time i come on here i'm gonna wait that you're, you're the only one who gets five thousand dollars. Be quiet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. Why don't we play? So, what do you have first? You have a. a clip? I, got, I just. Uh, I'll really explain here. What you know, my when I moved, my mom. She had uh, this crazy collection of home movies and historic footage and all this stuff. And as I was kind of looking through it, I said, "This stuff is can be very helpful because there's a lot of stuff that people don't even know about. Things right. that they don't realize that happened in my mom's past." I don't know where she had all this camera equipment. Her relatives from like the 18 and 1900s had equipment. So she just had this box of stuff. So when I can, I'll come on here and share it with you. And especially now, because I feel bad about what I've been, I've been using. You point out that I have, for some reason, I'm storing your mother's stuff. So this is stuff that when she, she stopped off and, it's in my apartment for some reason. So let me put you're, it up. You're, you're my archive. You're yeah. my archive. So I've got it. You and know. I'll explain a little bit what I think, uh, what my mom thinks it is and what have I heard it is. Okay. All right. Here's Mike. Um, These are movies from his mother's storage facility. Um, yeah, these are doctors and nurses. Back then they played, uh, they played Gallstone Bocce. <laughs> um, it was odd. I used to use body parts of dead people and just make different sports because they <laughs> they needed to uh, see. People didn't know global warming was an issue. This is back in the 30s, and this is uh, these are exploding mountain lions. <laughs> it was even back then. So you would think. And this, wait, what is this? Ten best new comedy books to read in 2021. Number one, it's a funny thing how a professional comedy. Oh, cool. Put that. Hmm. What? Why is I had nothing to do? Let's get. Oh, this is Joe Biden learning how to jam something in through Congress. <laughs> That's sweet. This is the comedy of uh, comedy team of shits and farts. <laughs> um, this is the uh, beard sketch that back in 1807 was big. <laughs> This is around, uh, this is the late, mid-30s, but this is one of the first people lining up for a Rolling Stones concert. <laughs> uh, this is a carpool. None of the kids could afford a car, but they were still <laughs> all about doing the carpool. What? Wait a minute. Something is, this looks like, uh, what is this? Amazon? Kind of top 20 memoirs. Robin Williams, Steve Martin. Wait a minute. Number 21. 
Hmm. It's a funny thing. Why? Your mother's uh, proud of you. I, did my mom? Did you guys didn't do it, right? I don't. I I don't know who did it. I can't. Oh, these are army guys uh, learning uh, how where not to touch yourself. Uh, <laughs> they're very lonely out there. This uh, this is one of these great, wonderful family gatherings. People would gather for the excrement train. They would come <laughs> through town. Families, kids would gather. It's sort of like the circus in the, would come to town. Oh, this is kind of a weird romance thing. When this guy is so heartbroken that he's actually removing stuff from his body through his chest, <laughs> taking his heart out to show the love he has for that woman. This is uh, all the chemicals it takes to make one hot dog. Uh, <laughs> this is, this is going way back then. One, back oh. then, yeah. This is one of the first burritos from uh, 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 Taco Bell. And as you look close, you can see it hasn't really changed that much. <laughs> one of the first of the Cuomo family to leave office. This was years and years ago. California back then, they even wanted babies to have tans. This is how hot it was. This was Woodstock before the real Woodstock. And this was before rock music was invented. So there was not a big turnout. Um, I guess it was back in like 58 or 52. Yeah. And wait, what, what you buy? What do you buy? It's a funny thing. Brought to you by It's a Funny Thing. Jeez, I, I, who, I, look, I don't know who's responsible for that. And I, I apologize. Yeah. Well, that, uh, that was really interesting. And, and I appreciate it. It would be nice if you, I guess your mother collects all your you know, clippings. And she, I'm so not, I don't. I don't know how those things got in there. I don't. I, I, I don't know if you guys did that. I, I just I don't know. If, um, as soon as I uh, get an agent, I'm going to call him and settle <laughs> this. This is not why I came on here. And, uh, Come back. Come back. We love you. We love you. Go All buy right. fun, the best selling. It's a funny thing. I, again, if you buy the book and it doesn't make you happy write to me and i will i will reimburse you and you get to keep the book that's my guarantee nobody has read this book and said boy this this didn't make me happy everybody loves this book Bye. And, I'm gonna, and i'm gonna go yell at my mom <laughs> maybe he's the one who put the I, i'm gonna have to investigate this and find out what happened Thank you, Mike Rowe, everybody. Thank you so much. <laughs> that was, uh...